In my last video I started making my new mitre station and in this one I'm going to finish it. You can find a link to part one in the description box below. If you didn't see that one I'd recommend checking it out before watching this one. The new mitre station is going to accommodate a couple of my larger machines underneath on mobile bases. That's going to be a really nice space saving solution as I can just pull them out when I need them and then tuck them away when I don't. On one side I'll have my planar thicknesser and that's already on a mobile base. I'll make a new one for it someday so I can get it to the ideal height. On the other side I want to put my new bench top disc and belt sander so I started by roughly measuring it up to get an idea of what size I wanted to make the mobile base. I designed my mitre station to be extra tall because I want the machines that sit underneath it to be at a good operational height and having the mitre saw a little higher than normal isn't a problem for me, in fact I actually prefer it. Next I measure the distance between the floor and the thin front panel at the top of the unit so that I could figure out what size to make the mobile base so that the machine just tucks away nicely underneath that front panel. Quick shout out to my friend Jack of all trades for donating me this sheet materials rack. My plywood has never been so well organised. I'm going to be using some 18mm plywood to make a carcass for the base and I started by cutting the panels to size. For this I'm using my new MFT table and this was the first time that I used it with the bench dogs and accessories which had just arrived. They allow me to make perfect 90 degree cuts quickly and easily. This unit is going to be really simple, it's basically just going to be a rectangular box assembled with wood glue and brad nails initially just to hold everything in place. I then drilled pilot holes and added screws to strengthen the joints. Once that was done I started making two identically sized drawers to sit inside the box. Some people love drawers, some people hate them but I'm definitely a drawer person and that's why I've got so many of them in my workshop. These drawers were built in exactly the same way as the drawer that I built in part one of the video so I didn't bother filming it in detail. I can use these drawers to store all of the accessories for the machine that's sitting on top so things like spare sanding belts and discs, the mitre gauge and I can use the rest of the space to store other stuff. I added a simple back panel to the unit which was glued and clamped in place and that's just going to make the unit more rigid and prevent it from racking from side to side. And then I added the casters. I had used these ones already which is why they're so dirty but these came from Amazon originally and I'll link to them in the description box below if you're interested. They're inexpensive, low profile and they can hold a lot of weight. I used some pan head screws to secure them to the bottom panel. That's it pretty much done, I'll probably add some drawer fronts in future just to tidy up the unit but for now this will do the job just fine. I know it's not pretty right now but it's going to be hidden behind a dust shroud later on anyway. Next I started making a hood for the mitre saw, its main purpose will be to help contain some of the dust that the mitre saw kicks out but the top shelf will also give me another place to put things. I measured the distance from the wall to the back of the fence and that will be roughly the depth of the hood and then I could start cutting the panels and once again this is just a dead simple construction, it's pretty self explanatory really. Once again it got a back panel to make it more rigid and that panel will also give me a way to secure the hood to the wall. You can see from this footage that the top panel has an overhang and the reason for that will become apparent a little later. Now was a good opportunity to check that the mitre saw had its full range of motion and luckily it did so I know that if I ever need to cut a 45 degree compound angle I can. Later on I also made a dust ramp thing to sit at the back. I just cut some triangles out of some scrap plywood over at the bandsaw. Then I mounted them to the back of the cabinet and the wall using hot glue. I then cut a thin piece of plywood to sit onto those brackets. Stuck that on with some hot glue too and then sealed up any gaps with silicon. This ramp is going to help direct the sawdust down into the drawer. And while I had the silicon out I sealed up all of the other gaps too. I wanted to add a hardwood trim to the front edges of the cabinets to make them more hard wearing and also hide the plywood edges and make everything look a bit cleaner. I have some of this 18mm square beading and I ripped it into strips at the table saw just to make it go a little further. These pieces ended up being about 6mm thick which will be perfect for trimming the edges. I offered them up, marked for length, 
cut to length at the mitre saw and then glued and pinned them in place. After a final bit of sanding, the trim was looking good. I also wanted to make a drawer front and for that I'd use more marine plywood to match the tops. I cut it to the size I wanted and then pinned it in place to the drawer. Then I could open the drawer and secure it with screws from the inside. I also added trim to the top edge of that drawer. I keep a lot of handles and things which I've reclaimed over the years from various bits of discarded furniture and because this drawer was quite wide it really needed two handles. I found these two matching handles which I thought would look really good with the trim that I'd just added. I used a combination square to mark up the position of the handles, drilled pilot holes and secured them in place with screws. Then I added varnish to all of the bits that hadn't yet been done. It would have made sense to do this earlier on, but I ran out of varnish and had to wait a few days for more to be delivered. I bought some accessories that I can use at the mitre station to make repeatable cuts. I've got two lengths of this 600 mm T-track and one of these slidey stop block type things, which you can lock down. And this has a measurement point built into it, which is fully adjustable via an Allen key here. So that's gonna be great for dialing in accurate cuts. And also I've got a self-adhesive measuring tape. This reads from right to left, which means I can set it up on the left-hand side of my mitre station. I bought all of those bits on Amazon and you can check them out at the My Tools link in the description box below. I'm not going to be fitting my T-Track in the conventional way. Usually the track would be mounted to a fence, but I don't want a fence, I just want to use the fence on my saw. And that's because I want to make use of the space on top of the cabinet where I'm going to be storing a few more machines. And I want to be able to pull them forward and push them back easily so that I can use them. So instead I decided to route out a housing groove for my T-Track to sit in. I needed to get the hood out of the way for this and I can reinstall that later on. The mitre saw itself is obviously fixed in position now and I know that the fence is set accurately because I spent some time setting that up. So I think what I'm going to do is run a straight edge along the fence and I can use that to determine where I want to route out my housing groove. The straight edge I'm using here is just part of an old metal bed frame as I don't have a fancy long spirit level or anything like that, but this works fine. I marked up a line at the back I've installed a straight cutter bit into the router and I just need to measure the distance between the cutting edge of that bit and the edge of the base plate of the router and that's 69 millimeters. I'm also going to use that straight edge as a fence to guide the router and I needed to offset the fence by that 69 millimeters. I did that by clamping on some scraps of wood and then carefully measuring the distance to the pencil line. I can then set the cutting depth by plunging the router while it's sitting on top of the track to get the perfect depth. And then I made the first cut, taking a shallow pass at first and then plunging the bit a little more on each pass until it was at the full depth. Next I needed to move the fence forward by 12mm which is the same width as my router cutter. And I did that by slotting in a piece of 12mm ply as a spacer and then I could repeat the cutting process to widen the groove. And then I just needed 6mm of more reach so I used a couple of shims and made the final passes. That gave me a perfect fit and I did a little sanding just to clean up the cuts. I also wanted to cut a really shallow groove for the tape measure. After setting the cutting depth and trying it out on a test piece, I managed to get it set so that it was sitting just a fraction beneath the surface of the ply, which is just what I wanted. I set up a fence again with some careful measuring and then cut a new groove just above the previous one. And this tape measure is 12 millimeters wide, which is the same diameter as my router cutter. From this angle you can see that the groove almost goes all of the way through that plywood top panel but there's another layer of 18mm ply beneath this one which I added in a previous video. 
I mounted that panel to the top using glue and screws and I actually hit one of those screws as I was routing out the groove. Fortunately though it didn't seem to damage the router bit and I managed to get rid of that screw using a combination of a hacksaw blade and an angle grinder. Unfortunately I didn't get any footage of that because I was too engrossed in the job at the time. In hindsight I probably would have made that panel much wider and then I could have made sure that any screws would have been well clear of the routed groove. So now I had a groove for the track and a shallower one for the tape measure. I can then secure the track down with screws. The method I used to position the tape measure is as follows. Using a scrap of wood, I measure and marked up 800 millimeters. It doesn't have to be 800 millimeters. It could be anything, but that's roughly how long this piece of wood was. So that's what I used. Then I cut it to length and confirmed with the tape measure that it was exactly 800 millimeters. I could then butt that piece of wood right up to the teeth on the blade so that it was just touching and I clamped it onto the fence. I then offered up a ruler at the other end and marked up a pencil line on both sides. So now 800 millimeters from the blade should be right here. I positioned my ruler at that point and then buttered up the stop block to it. And I can then peel off the backing on the measuring tape and position the 800 millimeter marking right at the arrow marker on the stop block. To check for accuracy, I can then set up the stop block at whatever measurement, I'm using 720 millimeters, lock it down and then make a cut. And then I measure to check that it's exactly 720 millimeters. Mine was about half a millimeter off, so I obviously wasn't careful enough. But that's okay because now I can use the fine adjustment tuning on the stop block itself to dial in the exact measurement of the piece of wood. And then I can repeat the process just to make sure that it's bob on. So this setup gave me a maximum cutting length of 1500 millimeters and a minimum of about 340 millimeters which was okay, but as a bit of an afterthought, I decided to add a little bit more T-Track to enable me to set up for cuts that were a little shorter. I prepared some more T-Track and cut a block to mount it to. That got glued in place using some epoxy. And I also glued on a piece of ply to support the measuring tape. This extra bit of T-Track is going to allow me to get a minimum cut length of 270 millimeters, which is much better. I'd also need to cut the bottom of the hood to make space for the stop block. So I marked up for a notch and then cut that with the jigsaw. That allowed the stop block to pass through okay, but I needed to take away some more material in order for it to be able to flip up. I'm not going to bother putting a T-Track and measuring tape on the right hand side of my mitre station, mainly because my old mitre station didn't have that and that never caused any issues for me, so that's what I'm sticking with. Next I used an old piece of plywood to make a shroud for the front of the hood. I cut it to size and sanded it clean and then I carefully measured and marked up the shape I wanted to fit around the saw. This shape will only allow me to make 90 degree cuts, which are the cuts that I make most of the time and it'll help stop most of the airborne dust particles coming back out from the hood and hopefully they'll end up either in the dust collection drawer beneath or getting sucked up by the dust extractor which will be connected to the saw. I cut out the shape with the jigsaw and after a bit of sanding I gave it a fresh coat of spray paint to tidy it up. Because the top of the shroud was quite narrow I also glued a thin strip of plywood to the back to reinforce it. I mounted the shroud using some of these magnetic catches so that when I want to make different angled cuts, I can quickly and easily remove it. The final job was something that I spoke about briefly in a previous video. I mentioned the idea of making some kind of dust shroud for the machines that sit underneath. And someone commented on that video suggesting that I used roller blinds. I thought that idea was a stroke of genius, so I bought a couple from Amazon mounted them to the front panels and these are going to work great. 
Sorry about the cat invasion. So that's the motor station done. At the moment, I'm not sure what I'm going to put under the central unit. I'm thinking maybe that's a good place for a chip extractor for my thickness planer, but I'm not sure what one to buy yet and I'm not sure if it will fit either. I hope you enjoyed the project. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like to receive early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, exclusive content and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.